Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the press conference of the 174th meeting of the Military Committee in Chiefs of Defence session. Tonight we have here with us General Petr Pavel, Chairman of the Military Committee, General Philip Breedlaff, Supreme Allied Commander Europe, and General Denis Mercier, Supreme Allied Commander Transformation. First, we will hear opening statements from all three generals, and after that, we will open for question and answer session. General Pavel, the floor is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, let me start uh, this uh, press conference by giving you an uh, um, overview of uh, the main outcomes of the first NATO Chiefs of Defense meeting in 2016. Over the course of today, uh, the Chiefs of Defence held uh, frank exchanges uh, of views and provided additional guidance for the months ahead in uh, light of uh, the challenging security environment and the fast approaching Warsaw Summit in July. During our session on Resolute Support Mission, uh, the 28 Allied Chiefs of Defence and their 14 partners received briefings from General Breedlove and uh, Commander Resolute Support General Campbell. The Chiefs of Defence uh, commended and stressed their support for the Afghan security forces who continue uh, to face significant challenges including the re-emergence of Islamic State affiliates. The Chiefs of Defence recommended to pursue the ongoing efforts based on conditions on the ground in support of enhancing the performance of the Afghan security forces and uh, assuring Afghanistan of our long-term commitment. The following session dealt with the current security situation in the Middle East and North Africa region. The discussions uh, with the seven Mediterranean Chiefs of Defense enabled uh, the Allied Chiefs of Defense to uh, gain first-hand uh, insight into the regional security challenges and uh, assess progress of ongoing cooperation between NATO and the Medi Mediterranean Dialogue partners, including defense capacity building. Concluding the meeting, the Chiefs of Defence stressed the importance of containing terrorism and the, the need to further enhance uh, practical military cooperation tailored to individual needs of the nations and of NATO. This afternoon's session is centred on strategy and adaptation. The Chiefs of Defence uh, welcomed the progress in the implementation of the Readiness Action Plan and then foc uh, uh, focused on NATO's continued military adaptation. The Chiefs of Defence offered their advice on how to take the adaptation forward, uh, taking into, account, uh, into consideration threats uh, on both NATO's eastern and southern borders. This advice uh, drawing on the strength of NATO's unity, capabilities and responsiveness focused on the essential measures uh, required to further reinforce NATO's collective defence. This advice uh, will be provided to the North Atlantic Council ahead of the Defence Minister's meeting in February. With that said, I will now hand the floor uh, to uh, uh, General Phil Breedlam, who will uh, um, brief you on the operational issues, and General Denis Mercier on transformational issues. Uh, so, Phil, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Peter. As General Pavel has mentioned, our military leaders discussed several important topics during this session, but I'd like to look back for a moment. Over the past two years, we have focused on rebuilding capacity, strengthening and increasing the speed of our responsiveness, and deepening national and collective resiliency to a wide range of threats. As a result, we are better, stronger, faster, and more resilient. This contributes to a refocused alliance that is addressing all challenges to its collective security. We are more united by a shared understanding that there are no nations unchallenged by today's threats, and there is no substitute for success. Our unity in the face of these challenges our commitment of resources and our prioritization of our efforts to meet these challenges has surprised those who challenge us. We are not surprised, but our challengers are. In moving forward, our military activity, posture, assistance, and cooperation will continue to be the formula for successfully strengthening and defending our alliance. 
we must remain focused on our strategic goal, preserving our system of security in the face of those who would wish to overwhelm it and those who wish to undermine it. This is the foundation of tomorrow's security. With that, I hand it over to my good friend, Denny Mercier. Thank you, Phil, and uh, good, evenings, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, was uh, stressed uh, uh, during this meeting and uh, as a well summit, our security environment is evolving, if not worsening, rapidly. Threats have become increasingly, uh, increasingly complex, persistent, and global. Faced with this multiplicity of threats, the Alliance will have to adopt a posture which is politically and militarily credible. This posture must express, must, must, must express it, its complete solidarity and determination to deter, contain any threat to protect our infrastructure, territory, and people, and to project stability as necessary. In this context, ACT program of work intends to address both the short-term deliverables for the summit and the long-term requirements expected well beyond Warsaw. So in the next six months, ACT will continue to support the implementation of the readiness action plan in close coordination with ACO, and we will focus on comprehensive and continuous awareness, which is a necessary condition for planning and, conducted, and conducting multinational operations. As the Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, I would like also to take a few moments to look beyond the summit, since we must simultaneously continue to prepare and reinforce the Alliance's future posture and its military credibility. As one of Transformation's main objectives, we have to consider new emerging threats and their implications for military capabilities and force architectures. We also need to exploit and leverage all potential operational and technological breakthroughs as they emerge over the coming years. So for ACT, the conclusion we draw from this, effort, from this effort will drive the implementation of six focus areas, defining the foundation of NATO's military posture and its credibility. These areas are command and control, logistics and sustainability, collective training and exercises, partnerships, capabilities, and human capital. It is my belief as the current strategic environment leads us to focus on the present, that NATO must continue to prepare the future. The, six, the implementation of the six areas I have mentioned, the preservation of a strong transatlantic bond, and enhanced cooperation with partners and with the European Union, and a dynamic and open engagement with industry will be the key drivers for the implementation of our future combat capacity. Thank you.